African-American community stood up again for me. You've always had my back, and I'll have yours. Welcome back to America Decides. More than three years after his victory speech, President Biden faces what appears to be, at least to the polls, waning support among black voters in our country. This, as an influential radio host named Charlemagne the God, says he regrets backing Biden in 2020. He told Politico, quote, It's almost like Democrats are doing this purity test. America's not pure. The people of America are not pure. We're flawed. I'm not looking for my politicians to be pure. I'm looking for my politicians to be effective. National political reporter for Politico, Bracton Booker, who wrote that piece on Charlemagne the God, joins us now. Bracton, it's great to see you. Fantastic piece. Thank you. Let's dig into this. According to a Gen Forward survey, which you also wrote about in a separate piece for Politico, 17% of black Americans support former President Trump. 20% said they're not for Biden or Trump. Let's do the quick math. 37% not in the Biden coalition. That's a big number. It's a big number. And it, we're Does Charlemagne not, the God reflect that? I, I, think he, I think he does. I think he does. Look, he, he expressly voted for and supported uh, President Biden uh, during the 2020 election. And he clearly is saying he does not have the support of Charlemagne the God this time around. And he says that Biden has not been an effective messenger. And he feels that Biden has not kept some of his promises that, that he made on the campaign trail. And certainly he has not appeared on his uh, radio show uh, since the, the 2020 election. I think that has something to do with it, too. Is it worth saying that he's not just any radio host? Oh, I think it's fair to say that. He, he's more of a mogul. I mean, he has not just the uh, Breakfast Club, which has a roughly 8 million uh, monthly listeners, according to him. 8 million monthly listeners. He also has a podcast. He's an author. He has several businesses. He has another podcast that's been going on for for uh, about 10 years uh, called Brilliant Idiots that's, that does... Um, does other things that are that are in the pop culture realm. So he touches a lot of, of different industries, including, obviously, the music industry. So he has a lot of influence across multiple... He's a mega multiple. influencer. Absolutely. And Absolutely. in the political sphere, a not insignificant one, one that any White House, but particularly this one, has to pay attention to. Well, look, I, I think... For a White House that is that is as we had discussed, it seems to be waning support with uh, among black voters. It would seem that you would go to this platform mm -hmm. to have a, co a conversation with with these voters that that seem to be peeling off, or at least don't seem interested in what Biden is selling to go sell your message, right? Mm -hmm. But the the administration, when you're talking to folks uh, who are on the campaign, they say they do not need Charlemagne. They have enough. Uh, in the repertoire, they're going to South Carolina next mm -hmm. week to uh, to a, a Mother Emanuel uh, Church, uh, a historical black church down there. They, they say they can engage voters on their own, and they don't need Charlemagne's platform in order to engage voters. And we'll see which, uh, which method plays out here. It's not an indictment, but it's a political criticism that Charlemagne the God expresses. Let's take a quick listen. You actually have to follow through on those promises. And whatever the reasons, out of the 99 biggest promises Biden made to people, he's only following through on about 30% of them. One thing America doesn't forgive is weakness. They want to see you fighting for your goals. And on some key issues, Biden seems to be waving the white flag. He just looks weak, and I'm not talking about physically. People want to see their president going to the mat to get what he wants. And it doesn't help that anytime Biden does take a strong stand on something, his staff comes out to say he didn't mean it. Let's take a look at two of those things, weakness and walk back. That's what he's talking about when mm -hmm. the staff says, no, 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 not that, weakness and walk back. Is that the essence of his criticism? Well, it's not only that. It's also that, that he fails to play up his own message, his own victories, his own policy achievements, right? <laughs> when you look at uh, President, former President Trump, who took outsized credit for a lot of policies that maybe he shouldn't have. At least he was selling his message to his voters, to the American people, saying, look, this is what I did for you. Uh, like, the one example is the stimulus checks. Yes. Folks what's, the name? What's, what's the name? Folks call them stimmies. <laughs> like, if you got those stimulus checks, you're like, yo, I got my stimmies. I'm going to go put that in the bank. Who signed that check? Donald Trump had his big signature on there, and a lot of people— And Charlamagne looks at that and says, that's not crass, that's smart. It's smart politics. It's smart politics from, from Charlamagne's perspective, because even if you don't like Trump, even if you were turned off by some of his rhetoric, you got those checks you saw Donald Trump's name on, and you're like— well, my government is actually working for me in this in this instance. Now, look, Biden passed policies, especially in, the, uh, in his first year in office, that also could be seen as 
dimmies, mm -hmm. but the Biden administration is not playing those up as saying, hey, we put money in your in your accounts, making sure that you stayed afloat when businesses were closed in 2021 when we first took office and and things were not quite open uh, during the during the height of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. But the Biden administration does not want to take those kind of cues from from Trump because they're too busy kind of drawing the contrast of all his legal woes at this point. For Charlemagne the God, it started with Kamala Harris. Yes. The entree to this world and the Biden White House. But that is cool if I read your story correctly. Yeah, yeah it, it, it appears That seems to so. me as, mong, as much a big dynamic of this as anything else. Well, look, uh, behind the scenes, we're, 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 we know that there are some back channeling that, that goes mm -hmm. on between the White House and Charlemagne. They, they like to talk to him about, hey, I think you've kind of characterized this, this issue uh, in an inaccurate way, but they don't tell him turn down the rhetoric. Charlemagne eventually endorsed Biden because of his relationship with Kamala Harris. And that has seemed too cool um, just because he feels like she, once she got into office, she really kind of took a step back and did not engage as much with him. Now, the mm -hmm. last time they t they talked publicly was on his Comedy Central show. Mm -hmm. uh, where that got a little frosty. It got a little, got a little frosty. But look, it got frosty But at, in that same moment when Charlemagne asked uh, Vice President Kamala Harris, who's, who's the real president? Is it Joe Manchin or is it Joe Biden? A lot of people point to that moment as like, that is the real Kamala. Where has that Kamala been? Mm -hmm. Because she dropped... The, the air of being a vice president and talk directly to him, said, look, you know the answer to that is Joe Biden. And how could you use these right. Republican talking points when you're talking to me, the vice mm -hmm. president, Kamala Harris? And people saw that moment like, where has that person been? But publicly, they have not had another public interview like that. And so people are kind of reading between the lines. It's like, maybe this relationship is not what it once was. Because, I mean, he campaigned with her mm -hmm. in South Carolina in, in 2019. As we like to say, watch this space. Absolutely. Bracken Booker, thanks so much for your time.